people fill in here. Okay, so we are at time. Um, and we have people here and we have an agenda. So I will get things started. So uh, welcome everyone. This is the monthly AMA um, about GitLab releases and deployments. Today is August 9th, uh, 2023. We're joined by uh, some members of the delivery group. We're a little bit shorter than some months here because we have uh, lots of people taking a well-deserved PTO, but uh, we will get through all your questions. And um, Lauren, thank you so much. You have the first two questions, in fact, so you can definitely come again. But do you want to kick us off on your first question? Sure. So um, this... Uh came up sometime when I was having dinner uh, and I was wondering what's the difference between GitLab release on gitlab.com and GitLab release for a self-managed customer? Do they manage their own releases? Are they bumping it up in their own instance? Are there nudges or is it automated? Um, so I was wondering if you could share a little bit about that. Great question. Excellent. Yeah. So um, they are different um, in terms of the installation. And uh, so GitLab.com is we at GitLab manage all of the infrastructure. We manage all of the uh, GitLab versions. So we do all of the operating uh, for the users. So we are deploying our latest um, like code, our changes to GitLab.com multiple times each working day. So people are, are right on the kind of uh, the bleeding edge of, of GitLab. And then once a month, we publish a scheduled monthly release uh, to everyone who's self-managed. So self-managed people have their own infrastructure. They are managing everything themselves. We just provide them with a package that they can then install and receive GitLab. So some of those, we call it self-managed. Some of those will be in cloud providers. Some of them may be running on their own servers or you know they manage that themselves um so they are related processes i'll give you a link on how we generate they are related in terms of how we build the packages but uh for self-managed users they they have the freedom basically so we have a maintenance policy which i'll talk you through a little bit in your second question so we have a maintenance policy around the support that we provide um, to customers and users on self-managed, but it's up to them to actually go through the process of there is a new version and I will install that. I have a follow-up follow -up question there. Um, would that mean that our customers then have their own engineering teams that are managing these updating of packages? Most likely, yes. I think. Um, I, I don't know if everybody does, but I think it, it's a reasonable assumption that yes, most likely they do. Cool. Um, very interesting. I didn't, I didn't know that. Uh, and then the second question I have is related to um, GitLab security releases. And the, the latest one, we have three uh, minor versions that were included with that. So I was wondering what, why that is. Why do we, have, yeah, why? Yeah, yeah, great question. Thank you for asking us. So this is related to our maintenance policy. So I've given you the, the link there. And so basically we are supporting security fixes in the current GitLab version and also the previous two. So this is, um, so bug fixes are only in the current version. And we, we recognize that not everybody is able to keep up with our pace of release. So we don't want to leave people vulnerable. So security fixes go out to two older versions as well. All right, thank you. That makes sense. Thank you for your questions. Great questions. Um, great. So McKelly, you have question three. Yes. So I would like to understand what's in the direction of the delivery group for Q3 and what are the main like pieces of work that the team and the group will focus on. Uh, in the next question. And for disclosure for the full audience, Michele does know the direction <laughs> as an engineering manager in the scoop. Um, so let me give a little bit of an overview. So we have got um, several uh, kind of areas that as a delivery group we um, are responsible for and that we care about. So this includes the deployments to getlove.com. It includes the package releases for our self-managed users, um, but it also is about helping us get ahead and be prepared for kind of the future of GitLab. So 
this quarter, we are working on a few different uh, projects. We have one project which is around adapting the release process. This has two parts to it. The first part um, and the most sort of like uh, critical timeline part is preparing for the monthly release date to change. So previously at GitLab uh, Forever, we have always put out the self-managed release on the 22nd of the month. That will change on 16.6, .6, which is November's release. And from that point onwards, we will be putting out the self-managed release on the third Thursday of the month. So it'll be a moving uh, date, but it maintained pretty similar kind of consistency. And from a GitLab point of view, it is a much, much better working practice. At the moment, we have um, some months where the 22nd is a Saturday or a Sunday, and that requires quite a lot of people to work on their weekends to handle the release. So we will be moving to um, the third Thursday. So we have some work to do to um, update the tools, update the processes. Um, we have lots of documentation and things like that that we need to update in preparation. Then the second part of the adapting uh, release process is around our security releases. So we currently have one scheduled security release per month, and that has a couple of challenges. One is that um, sometimes a month can be quite a long time if we discover a serious vulnerability on you know, the day after a security release, we don't really want to wait almost a full month before we fix it. Um, and we also um, have got uh, quite a lot of work, I guess. It's quite an intensive security release process to actually prepare a security release. So we've been doing some work this quarter. Uh, sorry, we've been doing some work in Q2 to improve, improve the security release um, process and make it easier to prepare. This will be the follow on and it will move us to um, multiple scheduled security releases per month. So we're aiming initially for two, and that will short, it will close up the gap between the number of security releases. It will also mean each security release should be smaller in terms of the number of changes. So that's going to be one um, piece. So let me just put a link in for that OKR. So, and then the other piece is. Um, I don't think we have an updated OKR. Am I right, Michele? Uh, not yet. We not yet. Okay, okay. So the other piece we... Uh, not the OKRs yet. <laughs> well, the other piece, we prepared an OKR and then we changed it um, this week and we're putting the pieces in place. But the second piece is around um, getting delivery group prepared for the future. And that is around cells. So we know that um, as a company, we are shifting focus to cells. There's lots of teams shifting focus to cells. And in delivery, that will be quite a big change for us because we will need to deploy uh, packages to cells and manage uh, rollouts across the fleet of cells. So this quarter, we are doing our first um, piece of work to help us uh, along that way. And we're focusing on dedicated. So currently when dedicated roll out their packages, there can be some downtime. There isn't always, but there can be. Um, and that's definitely not ideal. And, you know, it's difficult for customers to for us to give downtime. So we'll be looking into options we have for how can we roll out packages to dedicated without any downtime. And the significance of dedicated is it will give us a very similar tech stack to what we're expecting cells will be running on. And we'll hopefully then everything we learn in this quarter will be able to apply um, over the next um, months and years to our sales work. Are there any questions? No. Okay, great. So we will have updated OKRs uh, for this uh, second part very soon. Um, but uh, but yeah, quite an exciting time for delivery to be um, like moving sort of beyond dot com as it is it right now and into dedicated and then into cells. Excellent. So I'll move on to question four. Um, Olivia. Yes, start me. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, one of my questions is basically since we are doing continuous deployment to dot com. 
I was wondering, say from an SRE perspective, what are the triggers and what could what, what are the threshold and what could trigger a rollback, an automated rollback? I assume rollbacks are automated as well as deployments uh, in case of they're what, what actually kind of not. So this is a fantastic question because they're actually not automatic. Um, so I will give you a little context uh, first on rollbacks at GitLab. So we do have rollbacks. Um, at the moment, they're manually triggered. And that will usually um, always be the result of an incident. And in the incident, um, uh, we'll decide the best course of action is to roll back. Now, the rollback itself is very, very quick. Uh, 20 minutes, we will have the full .com fleet back on the previous version. But um, they're not automatic right now. And the reason they're not is because of post-deploy migrations. So we have a stage in our deployments where we run post-deploy migrations. And at that point, the database gets updated and we make any schema changes. We don't have a mechanism for rolling back beyond that point. So. What we haven't got right now is a way of always guaranteeing we can roll back. We can usually roll back, but we can't always roll back. So we haven't actually got, um, I guess, enough uh, a rollback ability for us to have invested in automatic rollbacks. Um, however, your question is still very, very interesting because I think it ties really closely with what the delivery system team was working on last quarter, which was to sort of start moving us to this path. So Michele, do you want to maybe talk us through um, what your team was was working on and kind of what thresholds you were sort of considering using? Sure. Um, so last month, last quarter, we started to look at uh, capability to manage our traffic dynamically, right? Because in our current infrastructure, we have static configuration. Also, our canary always receives the same amount of traffic. We have no capabilities to steer traffic away from a faulty deployment, right? So the capability we wanted to build is started, starting to have more dynamic way to manage the traffic that is incoming within our environments and be able to ship the traffic to new deployments or old deployments and with the meaning of a rollback uh, in case of need. So to look at this from a different perspective, we're looking at implementing different deployment strategies. And with different deployment strategies that were like aided by um, these routing capabilities on steering traffic. Just to make an example of um, a blue green deployment, right? So the idea would have been to have a new um, a new version of GitLab being deployed in um, a cluster and environment. Let's not be um, let's not be very exact with that for the current setup we have, and deciding when to switch traffic to the new version of GitLab that could serve traffic to our customers. And in case of problems, having like a quick immediate rollback to the previous version where this bug was not presented. So this is at very high level what we were trying to build. Uh, at a more granular level, we're actually trying to build more capabilities around in general the traffic shifting, but also looking at different deployment strategies of having um, progressive uh, rollout to um, some um, to different environment with a smaller amount and be able to play with those at the scale of uh, GitLab.com. So the end goal would have been to actually reduce any kind of uh, incident that was related to a, to a deployment, like all these kind of deployment that maybe are introducing a bug that hasn't been caught in previous environments and have a quick way to react to those and have minimal impact to our customer that using .com. You're muted, Yuri. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. It makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Thank you very much. But that brings to me another question. Sure. Since we cannot traffic the, the uh, we, we can select the where traffic goes, how do we handle deployment? Uh, basically, right now, uh, this means that in, at one stage on the entire fleet, we don't have the same exact same version of GitLab everywhere in the cluster, right? So basically, so, uh, from a purely um, random perspective of the uh, load balancer, uh, one one could uh, land to a a dedicated um, instance of the cluster, whatever, and on another call refreshing, whatever, it could land on another instance with a slightly different features, right? Yes, yes. So I mean, in general, in this case, you need to use always feature flags, right, and be able to also split feature flags when deployments are fully done. 
Makes sense. But in, in theory, right? We have actually an effort going on in development itself to be a, a better use of feature flag while we do our deployment that could have prevented us maybe to put some outages in back in the last weeks. In general, how we deploy right now is that we use a um, horizontal pod auto scaler that we auto scale the number of pods running the new version that are starting gradually to serve traffic to customers and then scaling down the number of pods we serve in the previous version. So right now it's kind of a it's kind of a rolling update uh, using an auto scaler, but uh, with a different with some differences with the standard Kubernetes rolling update. So this is uh, allow us to have a zero downtime deployment there but it's still not allow, it's allow, allowing us to um, quickly roll back to a previous version for the way that is, this is currently designed. And to quickly roll back to a previous version is not only the control on the pods and the cluster itself, it's also controlling where the traffic should be routed. And this means like uh, in, introducing different capabilities in our infrastructure to be able to understand uh, deployment and spaces and deciding how this should be steered. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, perfectly. Yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for questions. And I've just added the uh, link there as well for E, which has the kind of overview of our deployments. Thanks. Okay, um, Sam, your question. Yeah. Um, so we've done a lot of work on on security releases, um, and made a lot of difference we're going into into q3 with um some of the stuff working on more changes in security releases so what's happening what's new um we may or may not have some people on the call uh, who've been working on that directly steve take it away yeah, you, I can the, uh, you get to own the uh the credit for this Sure. Um, so yeah, we've made some big improvements. And so just a little bit of context for everyone. One of the most interesting problems we deal with um, in delivery is we're an open source, um, we have an open source code base, but when we have a security uh, vulnerability, we can't just make changes in the open source code and then wait for that to get built into a package and then deployed and released to customers we need a way to keep that vulnerability private until we've um, released it essentially. So we have a private mirror of our public open source repository and uh, changes go into that. Um, and we have to keep the two in sync, but at some point when we're making these security changes, uh, it can no longer stay in sync with the open source uh, code. So every time we do a security release, we kind of go through this process of merging in all these security changes, waiting for them to be built into a package, get deployed to GitLab.com. We create releases for self-managed users and put those out for them. And then we finally merge the code back into the public open source project where people can see you know, what we did if, if they were curious. Uh, and that, sort of like breaking of the uh, mirroring between the open source and security code, and then trying to get it back in sync together has uh, caused us problems for quite some time, purely due to the amount of traffic that we see um, by GitLab developers, uh, you know, pushing code constantly to um, our open source code base. So there's, there's sometimes there's conflicts that occur. Sometimes it's just a matter of we can't merge this code because there's there's too much traffic happening and so we've made some changes in the last few months to really focus on speeding up that syncing process so we don't run into as many problems um, we have a special project called merge train that uh, is doing this for us and it also keeps things in sync during that security release so that we don't accidentally lose any changes that that are not security related um, and then long term, we're going to sort of dog food our own product and we're going to use merge requests to do this. So we just simply create a merge request from the security repository into the uh, open source repository when everything is all said and done and we can merge it. Uh, the problems we've run into is normally you have to wait for a big pipeline, get all sorts of approvals for all of these changes. And so we've had to make some updates to get around that because 
we know that these are already approved. We know that they're already safe because they've, they've been approved and reviewed on the security um, repository. So we've been making improvements there. And then in addition to that, we, uh, as you can kind of tell just by describing this process, there's a lot involved in, you know, uh, kind of orchestrating the security release and making sure everything goes correctly. So um, that's, that's the job that release managers have every month. Uh, they spend a week kind of just keeping everything organized and keeping everything moving and making sure that the security release happens as planned and that as much of the fixes that are being written can get into it as possible. Um, that's always been one of the most difficult processes for delivery uh, and for the release managers every month. So we've been working to improve that process by uh, increasing automation. We've been using um, pipelines to automate many of the tasks that the release managers do manually in hopes that eventually release managers can kind of take a hands-off approach and just say, I want to cut a release and not really have to do anything at all from there. So uh, over the last few months, we use, a, we use a, an issue template that has a, a bunch of checkbox tasks for every uh, month when we do a security release, we have to work through these like 80 tasks in order for it to happen over the course of a week. And we've cut out around 30 or 40% of those tasks and automated them. And um, that saved a bunch of time and a bunch of headache for release managers. And we continue to kind of head down that path, especially since uh, our goal is to be able to do these more often than once a month uh, in the future. Excellent. I think Thanks that covers about that. everything. Does anyone have any follow-up questions to, to any of that? No, awesome. So I think this is a, a really it was a really exciting uh, project for us because prepare we prepare a lot of releases. We prepare the monthly release, we prepare patch releases, and we also prepare security releases and also critical security releases. And they all use a very similar approach. Um, so this was our first sort of project to add automation, make use of pipelines to sort of take away some of the manual steps and hopefully put us on this sort of track towards automating our releases. So um, I think we'll have lots of exciting kind of projects similar to this one in the in the future. And hopefully the outcome of this is releases just become a lot easier. Um, they become a lot faster. And hopefully then that starts to really get us into a place where preparing a release can be more of a self-serve thing. So you don't need to depend on a release manager who's fully trained up and has kind of specialist permissions to go through all the steps for you. But if we can automate this well, then it can start to become something that uh, we can potentially give to other teams. Fantastic. Um, does anybody else have a question that they would like to verbalize? No? Okay, in which case, thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for all the questions. Um, if you have any other things, you want to follow up on anything, then G underscore delivery uh, is where you can find us. Or you can comment on any of the epics or issues that we've, uh, we've linked in this agenda as well. But uh, thanks so much for joining and hopefully see you next month. Thanks, yeah, bye. bye. Thank you.